high drive to right. Takes a three. Touchdown, 49ers. Curry! When you talk about improving the ball club, is it is it just bringing guys up? Is it, it is it looking at trades that maybe you wouldn't look at at this time? I'm sure it's everything, but take us through that process a little bit. When you look at the team, you think, okay, we need to we need to do something a little differently. How do you go about doing that? Yeah, we've been you know talking about potential trades really all spring and, and going into the season. Obviously, we have you know some areas of need. We'd like to improve the offense, but you know it's interesting when you're thinking about trade targets. There's probably a certain threshold. I mean, you don't want to necessarily go and, and pick somebody off somebody else's AAA roster. You'd rather give one of your guys in AAA yeah. the opportunity to come up. I mean, if you're going to go out and get an established big leaguer, that's kind of a different story, and uh, I think that would be better understood. But just from a morale standpoint, you'd like to stay in-house. And we've got some guys swinging the bats well in AAA, so we're certainly looking at that as an option. I think if we go outside the organization, we're going to look for somebody more established who could potentially come in and help us right away. I'm curious the thought process when you talk about making the team better and maybe having to give up a minor leaguer, whether it be a prospect or not, how do you gauge whether it's worth it or not? Like, we can make our team better, but is it enough to get us to where we want to be versus what we'd have to be giving up to acquire that player? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, Front offices around the game uh, have gotten so focused on years of control and how long are you going to have a player and that kind of thing. and. You know, there's some guys that would take a look at a player and say, ah, well, you know, you'd only have him for, for two years. And, you know, my response is always, two years is a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time for us, a long time for fans. You look at a guy like Kevin Pillar, who, you know, yeah. we really only have for this year and potentially next year, uh, he's going to be arbitration eligible again. Um, but, again, he was a guy that we thought would improve our team, yeah. and we went out and made that deal. So I think that's how we look at it. You know, you, you're, you're right. I mean, we're an organization that's got an eye on the future, and we don't necessarily want to undermine that. But, you know, we've put a lot of value on the present, too. And if there's another deal like that Pilar deal where we trade away some younger guys yeah. or someone who will help us right now, we're, we're open to that for sure. Well, I'm sure there's got to be a metric that you, that you would use where you'd say, okay, this can make us 20% better. Right. But what we're giving up may make us 40% better four years from now. And right. that's got to all be factored in, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I think that's how you look at it. You look at, you know, one thing that front office has kind of started talking about more is the surplus value of a player. You see that in every sport now. You know, you, you know, with a young prospect, you figure you've got six years of control on him. You know about what you'd have to pay him. You know about what kind of production he'll give you. And so, you know, at some point, you can even put a dollar value on the potential production from a guy. Okay. And, you know, you look at what your current guys are doing. I mean, if you have a player who's out there who, you know, has a $10 million salary and produces about $10 million of value, you know, I wouldn't exactly say that guy's worth zero. I mean, he's still a $10 million uh, production player. Um, But that's kind of how you try to have some discipline in that process. Got it.